Greetings and welcome to Stow World, episode four, the Jem'Hadar fighter. Uh, Tony here with you, and I do apologize for the delay in this episode, but I was able to finally finish recording it today. And I have to tell you, due to the storms and everything, and work and everything being crazy, I really wasn't, I really didn't have the time to do anything as far as that goes. So right now. We are doing the Gemidar fighter. We're going to do an episode on that. And I had an earlier video on this fighter. But I have to tell you that even with the earlier video, it was before the Gemidar set came out. And there was so much other stuff that really hadn't been out yet for this fighter. And a couple things have come out for it since. So I want to welcome you on board the bridge of the USS Invincible. Because I have to tell you, this is this ship is awesome. In fact, it's my favorite escort. Probably the best pure escort in the game. And the configuration is kind of interesting. I have a different config. However, I keep my configuration very canon to Star Trek lore as far as the way this ship is configured. You see me holding a Polaron weapon. That's basically a an anti-Borg Mark 12 Polaron rifle. Which I'm chilling here with. But I don't even know why my weapons are out. But, um... <laughs> Going to put them away. But I'm wearing the new cool 1,000-day veteran reward uniform or 900-day or whatever you want to call it. And we're on the bridge of the USS Invincible, which, by the way, the Jem'Hadar fighter, as great of a ship as it is, it ranks number one in my book as the worst bridge of all of any ship in the game, honestly. Maybe maybe not as bad as a shuttle, but any actual ship, I I'll tell you what, this is the worst bridge. However... I, I, cause, because I wish it was a little bit bigger and had some more stuff on it, but it is functional. The, the cool thing about it is that everything's right in front of you. You got the, you know, you can access your duty officers here. Got my Borg engineer, access an account bank here. And then who would not ha who would have a Jem'Hadar fighter without a Jem'Hadar officer? And uh, I also have a Vorta, my own alien creation version of a Vorta, as a science officer on here. So uh, definitely a lot of great stuff going on when it comes to this bridge. But, you know, it is what it is. It's a typical, simple, <laughs> very simple Jem'Hadar uh, bridge. That, that's basically the, the Jem'Hadar fighters. It is authentic to the Star Trek canon where, you know, there wasn't much to them. Maybe some living quarters for a Vorta or a Founder, but really... Honestly, the Jemadar don't sleep, so what would they need cabins for, you know? So, anyhow, welcome aboard the USS Invincible, and we're going to go over my configuration, and you're going to watch me play, use this ship in Kittimer Accord Space Elite. So, we're going to exit off here, and we are in a very, very familiar place, by the way. When you see me beam off the ship, and you see the exterior of the ship, you're going to see us in probably one of the most familiar places, and one of my favorite places to be in the Star Trek universe, and that is, of course, Deep Space Nine. You see the wormhole in the background, and then you see Deep Space Nine here. And I, I am ecstatic right now. So here's the ship. <clears throat> Not much to her. <clears throat> the Jem'Hadar fighter, and it looks very authentic to the show. Very, very good job. In fact, a very, very good job in designing the ship. I think it looks great. And there's a lot of, this ship has got, this, this ship is great. It has, it has multiple, it has really good hull hit points. It has a lot of, uh, it has a lot of capabilities. Um, the set, the Gemidar set is very, very cool. So we're going to go over all of those really cool abilities that we have looking here. So going to check it out. So I'm letting you look at it really quick. Getting a good overview of what this ship looks like. And wow, I love the, I love the bug as they call it. So going to check out, uh, what we got going on here and uh, this ship of course has some multiple some really cool stuff going on in it you have the you have 10 console slots because they wanted to level these ships up with the fleet versions of the regular tier 5 ships and uh, well let's go over my configuration so I have a whole I have a really crazy config on this ship uh, first of all I got uh, dual heavy uh, Polaron cannons regular dual Polaron cannons quantum torpedo launcher and I have a dual Polaron beam bank for the front. And this is a very, very good ship for a full frontal assault on the Borg or anything else coming up on here. And then you got the Jem'Hadar set, which is really, really cool. You can get that by doing some of the Cardassian missions. And so it does some cool stuff. You got uh, you know, stealth detection. 
It improves your flow capacitors like energy siphon, charge particle burst, tachyon beam, etc., etc. And, um... Inertial dampeners helps your starship resist, hold, disable, repel, knock, and slow effects like tractor beams, stuff like that. Then you have plus 24 to the graviton generators. This is the deflector I'm looking at. Countermeasure systems, etc. You look at the shield, and the shield's pretty sweet. It's it's pretty cool. You got the, uh, the starship driver coil helps that out with flight speed, diverts all power to engines. Uh, the full impulse. So the full impulse is actually faster in this ship. And the flight speed is faster too, actually. And it gives you some extra weapons power. Which I like. And then you have the shields, which do... Um, reduces energy damage of shields, yada, yada, yada. But it also helps prevent crew death resistance. And also gets you a plus 10 in the kinetic damage resistance. Which is nice. Now let's check out the, the cool abilities of this set. You have Dominion Synergy, when you have the whole set installed on your ship, which extra Polaron damage and extra Starship Power Insulator attribute right there. Then you have the Anti-Proton Sweep, which is here, which we'll go, which we'll look down here. The Anti-Proton Sweep is right here, and it's really cool. It helps, it lowers shield power. In fact, it lowers the shields of enemies a little bit so it weakens their shields and it also disables cloaking devices so this is a really really cool ability to have with the Jem'Hadar set then of course you have victory is life a 1% chance to strip one buff while using Polaron weapons which only works works on this ship and the Cardassian Galar and honestly I would even put this on a Galar uh, the Galar is great with what it has but and it will do a Galar configuration somewhere down the road here but I'm doing a special on this ship because obviously Cryptic is doing a giveaway for it right now up until November 14th 2012 at least for a little bit and periodically they do stuff for this ship so right now they're doing the reinforcements pack where you can you know you can basically get you can basically get um, a chance to win this ship so very very cool stuff so Obviously, my rear... I, I, I was going to do turrets. I do alternate between Polaron turrets and beam arrays. I like the beam arrays a little bit better on this ship. I'll exp and I'll explain why in a minute. And then I do quantum mines, which a lot of people thought was very bizarre. But when you see me do Kittimer code, you'll understand, you will understand why I do quantum mines. But I like mines on ships. I have mines on two ships. I have them on the Defiant, my Defiant ship. The USS Storm, and I have them on this one. And it's kind of a cool thing because when you lay out this ability down here, which we call Dispersal Pattern Beta 3, you get some pretty good mine coverage, especially if you're patrolling, say, you're patrolling the Kang. You have extra mines to help disable birds of prey. So, and we'll go look at the Deuterium Surplus, and you got weapons batteries, and obviously as my devices. Then you have the... Neutronium alloy, which I use as my on every ship. I have the blade of hull armor. I have the tetraburnium hull armor, and then you have the universal assimilated module, which I think they're going to get rid of soon. But I like to use that module on this ship. Uh, for my one science console, a field generator for the shields. I use three of these Polaron phase modulators right here to help my Polaron weapons out, and then I have a zero point quantum chamber and. I have an isometric charge, which actually is really cool because it does have a couple extra things that go with just with the Jem'Hadar attack ship or the Galar. I actually use one of these in my Galar. Now, isometric charge is freaking awesome, and I love this console to have on this ship, and I think it's very, very good. So without any further ado, we are going to go check out the... Version of myself playing with a couple random, a few random players on Kittimer Court Space Elite. All right, we are here getting ready to go into Kittimer Court Space Elite. I don't remember when this was recorded. I recorded this a while ago because I anticipated this had to be, this has to be like almost a month ago. But you get an idea of how I had this ship going on and uh, how things are going. So you can check it out. Um, you can check it out in action. This is a fun, fun ship to actually fly. I, I am very, very ecstatic at the fact that I've had as much fun flying with it. So, 
uh, with that, you can check it out if you want to uh, go on here. And uh, yeah, so you see my capabilities in the bottom. I'm going to go over my bridge officer configuration while I'm doing this. Um, you see I have my science officer to the left. and one, It has two universal lieutenant slots. And I have uh, hazard emitters, two. And I have science team one for my shields. My engineer, I have an engineer inside of the other lieutenant slot. I have reverse shield polarity one and engineering team one. Then you look down at uh, Kuteklagan, my wonderful Jemhadar bridge officer. You see beam overload one, torpedo high yield two, um, cannon rapid fire. I take it back, not cannon rapid fire. We have um, torpedo spread three. Then I have uh, mine pattern beta three. And then for my other tactical officer in the co lieutenant commander spot, I have tactical team one, a cannon scatter volley one, and then I have cannon rapid fire two. And then my engineer, who has one slot, I have emergency power to shields. You will be one so anyhow check it out you're gonna see us attack and everything but this is a fun ship and to be honest with you i've already i have already commentated on kidmer court space elite so what i'm gonna do is leave you with, with some music here and this is uh, a good buddy of mine a, a, a really great project he has going on with different singers this is Stu marshall from empires of eden this is a great great uh musician he's a great guy and i'll tell you what this guy has 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 it going on as far as music is concerned so uh, definitely a great heavy metal guitar player, and um, we're going to check out some Empires of Eden while we watch me and this Gemidar fighter with a few other people. And man, we really actually, <laughs> we really actually kick it some butt at this. So here you go. Here's some Empires of Eden while you watch this ship in action.
Okay, so we're back here. We just obviously defeated the gate. And uh, check this out. So you're gonna, we're gonna fly on over to the other side. Again, you gotta blow up the gates before the timer runs out. Yada, yada, yada. I believe we end up doing it. Um, I don't remember now, <laughs> honestly, because uh, this is a pre-recorded game that I did uh, quite some time ago. Although I love the guy, the fact that the, there was a guy with a USS Gravedigger. And I don't know if that's in reference to the metal band Gravedigger, but if it is, that dude is awesome because that's one of my favorite German heavy metal bands. So anyway, we're going to blow up everything coming out of this gate. The spheres, the probes. I laid out a minefield just behind me. So if they do get past anybody, the mines will hit them. And someone's got a time ship. I don't know if that's a Mobius or if that's an actual time ship. But uh, I'm just going to kind of go over here and start blowing everything up. Now, here's what's cool about this ship. This ship has some great hull strength. In fact, it's got the hull strength of a cruiser on this. And the durability on this thing is unbelievable. It really is. It's, it's, the durability is unbelievable. And that's what makes it my favorite escort. You know, it's a toss-up between this and the Armitage. But if I had to go with my gut, my favorite, just pure badass, I'm going to damage everything I can possibly can escort, it would be this. It would be the Jemadar fighter. The fighter is probably one of the ultimate ships in this game. And if you happen to have one... Consider yourself fortunate. I've had mine for almost a year now. And it's a fun ship. It's a great ship, actually. So, um, anyway, I was talking about the beam arrays. Some ships I like turrets on. This one I like the beam arrays on. And only because, and I don't know, so I, sometimes you get a preference, but since I have mines on it, I like to have a little more of a rear attack as opposed to having turrets and then having a torpedo launcher on the back. So, um, I'm big on the beam arrays with the Polaron beam arrays on the back. I do have a couple of pull around tur turrets. Sometimes I'll switch it up depending on my preference, depending on what I'm playing and who I'm fighting and etc. etc. This is also a great PvP ship. In fact, I'm not skilled up in it, but if you're skilled up in the ability to not not get held like by tractor beams and stuff, it, and, and obviously in PvP matches, people use tractor beams quite a bit, you, you can really have a high resistance to that just by using this ship along with a high skill level in that category. And I forget what it is, but I'm just kind of almost up against it. And you see the mines doing some extra damage. That is a big reason why I love mines. I really love uh, space mines in this game. Uh, only on two ships. Now, I actually use plasma mines on the Defiant ship, believe it or not. And the reason I use the plasma mines is very simple, because the plasma mines just do some extra damage. You can just do some constant plasma damage. Plus, they slow targets down when they, when they hit. So, um, I love the, the plasma mines, but I also love, like I said, I also like the, the quantum mines, but really only on these two ships. All the other escorts, I just can't see myself using mines on, but I love them on this, and I love them, I love them on the Defiant. And maybe my, my idea for the mines actually came, because I used to play, and many of you may or may not remember, the old game Star Trek Armada, the original one, where your Defiant actually would launch a mine. That was like one of its abilities, the Defiant class ships, and I thought, you know, I'm going to launch a mine, but maybe make it like a plasma mine or something different. And, you know, I take that back. I do have mines on one other ship. I have it on the Decora, the Chronotime Mine Launcher from the Decora class. I do have that. But, <clears throat> I, I actually, I haven't used that ship in a long time. Maybe we'll do a Decora. 
configuration because that's a great ship. But the lockbox ships are cool. Um, you know, I'm big on the Jemadar Galar, and I love the time ship as you just saw. I don't know if I'm that big of a fan of the Tholian stuff yet, but, um, you know, maybe I'll buy a ship off the exchange. I'm not sure. And, uh, by the way, always watch out for the gate. The gate will do you in if you get too close to it. It really will mess you up in the worst way. Very easy to get killed by the gate. So, but anyhow, here we are attacking everything and anything. And, uh, somebody's using a heavy plasma torch, which is kind of cool. I don't know who that is. In fact, I don't think I know really any of these players. This is an STF, Elite STF channel. And again, if you're not on the Elite STF channel, you don't know what you're missing. You want to want to get yourself going really well with the new reputation system coming out, then you definitely want to do that. So now, we're going to concentrate all firepower on the gate. Maybe not. What did I do here? Oh, I see what I'm doing. I see. I remember this now. We almost lost optional because... One of the probes almost got through. And, yep, I remember. Now I remember playing this game. I remember actually playing this instance of Kittimer Court. Because I come over here and help out, and I believe I go back to the gate and lay siege to it because these guys ended up getting control. And see, you see all the quantum mines everywhere? Those things will not really slow a target down, but they just do damage upon damage on targets. And, yep, I just lowered its shields, and I used the isometric charge as well. <clears throat> coming in, and, um, oh, well, there you go. But you see the durability of the ship is just fantastic. So, now I'm just going to come over here, lay siege to the gate, and I believe we end up getting optional. If I remember correctly. I don't remember now. I think we get it. This is such a fun ship, though. It really is, and, you know, People that have these, and honestly, people that have a Jem'Hadar fire fighter, they swear by them. They will tell you, especially a tactical officer, they will swear by this ship and say it's one of the best ships in the game. And because there's so much stuff you can do to it, it's very versatile. It's got great hit points, great hull, great structural integrity. Everything about it is just outstanding. And believe it or not, it's probably the most sought-after lockbox ship in the game. If you look at the prices of these ships on the exchange, they're astronomical. Whereas, you know, you could buy a Tholian recluse carrier you, uh, in the low buy store, but you could buy, like, a Widow Fighter. Not a Widow Fighter, but what do you call it? Um, the Orb Weaver, that's what it is. You could buy one of those for, like, 50,000 energy credits in the exchange. You could buy a Decora for, like, 55,000, 60,000. This thing, I've seen this thing go for, like, 120. And people just go nuts over the Gemidar Fighter. Yeah, we get optional. That's right. We rule. Ha <laughs> ha. But uh, anyhow, this is what I think is awesome. So you're watching me and a few others go full out. And one guy's got a bunch of anti-proton beams, very smart, and we blow the gate. Now comes Denatra, whom I just detest. I just can't stand. I hate fighting her. She is just a... She's just a biatch, you know? <laughs> so we did get optional, though. I don't know if it's me. Yeah, I think I go up and... You see Donatra's uh, scimitar waiting for us to come after her. And here we go, man. We're going to attack. And she likes to recharge her shields. She's got a variety of weapons, but her ship is very slow. And I'm looking around like I'm flying around or doing whatever. I don't even know what I'm doing here. Look at this, the full bombardment. And that's what I'm doing. I gotcha. You want to stay, again, with the Natra, you want to stay at least five kilometers away from her. Otherwise, she will cloak all the time. And it's very, very annoying. Believe me when I tell you, her cloaking is annoying. Because she does it quite often. But you want to stay. I usually stay, I don't know. I stay pretty far away from her. I'm not really near her too much. But we're, we're doing pretty good. It looks like we're doing pretty good damage to her. And Denatra is actually, I think, the Romulan that was in Nemesis. And I guess she gets assimilated eventually. So, and see, someone got too close. She cloaks. I'm backing away. Kind of waiting. <laughs> and, um, around the third heading for home, almost here. But I think we come and annihilate her pretty quickly here, actually, um, when she recloaks. So, 
pretty good stuff though. So as far as other things coming up, Season 7 is coming up. I'm looking forward to it. I STF quite a bit. And also some of the special Romulan missions will be cool. I'm really looking forward to that. Maybe Romulan missions being something different at least. And uh, here we go, man. Look at this. Just the full... Just coming at her like you wouldn't believe. Look at this. There we go. Kind of cool. I'm actually looking at one of the players over here. Looks like his name's Scythrax. You know what's cool? I, I want to do a ship with all plasma weapons. You know, I do have I do have my Takir with plasma weapons, but I'd love to do like an escort with plasmas. Just to see how it would work. Plasma weapons are cool. And the Noxra goes down. So, with that, everybody, have a great one. Glad everybody could watch another edition of Stow World, and uh, you get to see my Jem'Hadar fighter configuration. Hope you win one in a lockbox or find one on the exchange, but I'll tell you what, if you don't have one, you are definitely missing out. So with that, everybody have a good one. Until episode 5, take care.